Hey what's going on guys Tanmay here for Telusco Learnings and welcome back to another video tutorial on the JavaScript for beginners especially the jQuery part. So in the previous video tutorial of this playlist we've started off with understanding what is jQuery and in the previous video we took a theoretical as well as a practical implementation of jQuery wherein I taught you how to actually include the jQuery library into your folder. So if you have missed that video please do check that out because we're going to be continuing right from over there. And in this video, we are going to be covering a very basic and very fundamental topic under jQuery that is jQuery selectors. So with that being said, let's get started. So as you can see into my project folder, I already have my jQuery in the JS folder. So let me just show you. So in the code part, I have our default.html document. Then in the JS folder, we have the jQuery library, which we downloaded from the jQuery.com website. I'll drop the link in the video description. And then I have also created a CSS folder inside which I have a style.css file which we will be linking in this video. So what you can do is you can just create these folders and create these files. So just right click on this and create new file, create a style.css because we'll write the CSS separate. We'll try to make this clean because we are going to be continuing and using the same document in the further videos of jQuery as well. And lastly, as you can see, we have our HTML document. We have the head inside which just we have the title of jQuery selectors, we have the body, we have a heading tag, we have a button and we are using the on click event to call function fn1 and below the body we have a script tag which includes the jQuery into our project into our HTML document and below that we have one more script tag in which we are going to be writing our function fn1. Okay, so let's start off with understanding what is jQuery selectors. Now jQuery selectors allow you to select and manipulate HTML elements. Now, just as we were manipulating HTML DOM elements using JavaScript, using the document dot get element by ID or get element by class or get element by name and all those methods in jQuery, the way we manipulate HTML elements is using the selectors. Okay. Now these selectors are used to find or select HTML elements based on their name, ID, class, type, attributes, values, and a lot more wherein we have a different variations in jQuery selectors. So there is a lot of flexibility compared to what we have in JavaScript. So it's based on the existing CSS selectors that we did in JavaScript. And in addition, it has some own custom selectors. Okay. So up until now, if things are a little confusing, don't worry. Once we write the code, you'll understand it very well. So in this video, we'll see three different selectors. That is the three basic CSS selectors. And in further videos, we'll continue with more selectors in jQuery, which are specific to jQuery. But with that being said, let's start off with the coding part so that you understand what the selectors are and how they look in terms of the syntax. So let's actually check the function fn1 if it's working. Let's just pop up an alert. We'll say working. And let me click on the button. And there you go. It is working. Okay. So now here is where we have to use the selectors. So the syntax of the selectors is as follows. You have to write dollar opening and closing round brackets. And inside this double quotes or single quotes, you have to specify which selector you're going to be using. Okay, so depending upon what selector you're using, the element or the ID of the element or the class of the element can be accessed and then that particular element can be accessed. So just to give you an example, if I want to access this H2 element, so we have this H2 tag, so I'm going to write H2 over here, plain and simple. So this is the first part. However, this is a little bit of incomplete part because we still have to specify something that we have to do onto that element, right? By writing this much, what you did is the JavaScript equivalent of this would be document dot get element by id okay so by using dollar you are actually basically calling the jquery library so that's the syntax and the thing that you specify in the opening and closing round brackets in, in the double quotes or single quotes is what is going to be selected so after the selection you have to perform something right so typically we have something along with the selection that is the action and the action is basically a method okay so whenever you select an object that is the HTML element, you're going to be performing some action onto it. Let's say you're performing CSS transitions. Let's say you're performing some color changes. Let's say you want to hide or fade in and fade out. So that is the action. Okay. So we have predefined functions in jQuery, as I mentioned, functions and methods, which we are going to be using a lot. And then we are directly going to be using them over here. So this is how the typical syntax goes. Let me just show you how you can actually fade out this entire text over here. So we are going to be selecting the H2 tag, right? So I'm going to say dollar opening and closing round brackets in the double quotes. I'm going to say H2 because we are directly going to be selecting H2. I'm going to say dot 
and I'm gonna say fade toggle. Okay, so this is an inbuilt method which performs fade in and fade out depending upon what the situation is. So right now, since it is visible, it will fade out. If it is invisible, it will fade in. Okay, so let's see if this works. So if I click on it, there you go. It faded out. If I click on it, it will come back in. So this one line of code is something that we saw in the previous video also. However, we did not take a deep understanding of what exactly is the syntax about. So this first part is the selector as I mentioned. And the next part is always going to be some action which we are going to be performing on that element. Now this was the first type of selector which was the entire element selector. Okay, so let's say if we had multiple h2 tags. Okay, so if I click on it, all of them are going to be selected and all of them are going to be hidden. So there you go. You can see all of them got faded out and all of them can come back in also depending upon the function being called. So now what if you want to select only one out of the three, right? So this is where another CSS selector can be used. So you have to give ID for that case. And let's see, we give ID as first H2. Okay. So I'm going to say first H2. Now, if I want to just fade out this one, so what I can do is I can use the ID selector. Now in CSS, remember when we want to perform or manipulate or apply CSS styling to a particular HTML element with ID, what we do is we say hash, we say the name of the ID and then we perform the actual styling, right? So let's say I want to change the color. Let's say I want to make it blue. Now, right now you can see that it is not applying because we still have to include this CSS file into our HTML document, right? So that has to be done in the heading tag or you can also do it at the bottom, but we'll do it in the heading tag and that is done by using the link tag. So I'm going to say link. I'm going to say rel that is the relation is style sheet. And then I'm going to say href. So href is actually giving the location of the CSS file. So it's inside the CSS folder and inside that we have style.css. So now you can see immediately the style got applied, which we had typed in the style.css file. So this only applied to the first h2 tag because we've given the ID of first h2 to only this h2 tag. Okay. And you know that the ID has to be unique. So you cannot use this first h2 to the second heading tag, or you cannot use this entire ID on the entire document. So you can also have a class. So let's say class my heading. Now this class can be applied to all the different h2 tags. So let's say we apply this to first two heading tags. Okay. Now let's say you want to just hide this one h2 tag. So what you can do is you can copy this ID. You can paste it over here and you have to use a hash. Okay. So to actually access the IDs, we have to use the hash and then the ID name. So now if I click on it, only the first one is going to be hidden. If I click back, it's coming back. Okay. Now let's say you want to perform this fade out and fade toggle on these two. So you can access them by using the class selector. So what we'll do is we'll copy this my heading and paste it over here and classes are accessed by using the dot operator. So this dot operator is supposed to be used with the classes. And now the first two will be hidden and the last one will be visible. So if I click on it, there you go. If I click back, they come back. So these are the three different basic CSS selectors in jQuery. The first one was the entire element selector, which was selecting all the H2 tags together. The second one was the ID selector, which was selecting an element with a particular specific ID. So unique ID had to be given. And then the third one was the class selector, which was selecting all the elements having the particular ID. So this is not confined to one particular element. Let's say we have a division. So let me just say division class and I give this class name also my heading and inside that we have a paragraph. So I'm going to say this is para and you can see this division is added over here. This division also has the class of my heading. So now if I click on this, even this entire division will be hidden. So the paragraph inside this will also be faded out. So let's click on it. So there you go. You can see the entire division was faded out. So that's why the paragraph also got faded out. So this is how the selectors work. And these are the very basic ones, which are also there in JavaScript. We could do this in JavaScript also, but then jQuery also has some extra selectors, which give us more flexibility. So we'll see that in the next video. Right now, I just wanted to give an introduction on jQuery selectors. So yeah, that's it for this video, guys. I hope you understood the basics of selectors. So the selectors are just used to select the HTML elements 
and then we can perform some operations onto it. And the operations are basically gonna be the methods which are predefined in jQuery or you can also create your own. So yeah, this was the first video. I'm gonna wrap it up over here. In the next video, we'll see some more jQuery selectors which are specific to jQuery which can add a lot of flexibility. And yeah, that's it for this video guys. Let me know in the comments how this video was and if you like this, please give it a thumbs up. Do share it with your friends and see you guys in the next video. Peace.